tubes. Welcome back to the bench. Yeah, we got some tube-based electronics to look at. It's a little preamp. I had a viewer send me a bunch of electronics. Sent me a amp, TPA 3116, this little MP3 player amplifier thing. And that's not the half of it. There's a whole box stuffed full of electronics. So, yeah, I really appreciate that. And one of the items was this tube amp. Preamp, actually. So, uh, I don't even know if it works yet. I have, haven't powered it up. And that's what I'm going to do in the video. I'm going to power it up, take a look at it, see if it's any good. You know, uh, pop it on a scope and... Uh, Take a look at some waveforms. So we have our inputs and outputs. Um, I had to follow the traces here. You know, this is the input because the traces go over to the volume control. On the outside of the volume control it goes to these ceramic capacitors. Now that's taboo to put ceramic capacitors in the signal path that's uh, high crimes against audio there it's not so good one thing I don't like right off the bat but I have a feeling that's the least of the problems I might run into here it's in Chinese can't really read it but down between there it says it requires AC 12 volts so I have to find an uh, AC supply, and the rest of the circuit here you got a lot of uh, electrolytics, of course these vacuum bulb transistors, and we have four solid state transistors as well, of course some resistors, capacitors, and diodes. I went on eBay and looked for this amplifier. When you go to eBay, just search up a tube preamp. What is it? 6J1 or something like Yeah, 6J1. And you should be able to find one of these amplifiers pretty quickly. One of the auctions or listings had a schematic with it, so I, I screen grabbed that and printed it out. These are pretty cheap. They're usually around 10 bucks, 10, 12 bucks or so. They're not very expensive at all. So the reason we need 12 volts AC is because it goes into a voltage doubler circuit. We have the a positive side voltage doubler and a negative side voltage doubler. And uh, this capacitor is marked backwards here. It should, the plus should be on this side, on the negative side. Then it goes into something that looks like a constant current source, but it's, uh, it has capacitors connected in the base circuit here. And what it does is uh, clear up the ripple, gets rid of the ripple, and you end up with plus 28 volts and minus 28 volts relative to your circuit ground. The reason they do that is so they can put uh, 56 volts across the tube circuit here. I'm not familiar with this tube so it probably actually needs a lot more voltage but they're boosting the 12 up enough so you can get some amplification out of this thing. And over here this is the filament supply. You have the two 6 volt filaments in series down here. So really, all oh, this is supply, and if you look up here, this this part of the circuit is the actual amplifier. So we just have a simple single stage amplifier circuit here. One issue I see right off the bat, you can see here, this is the plus 28 volt line, and this is the minus 28 volt line. And when you first power up this circuit, you're going to have plus 28 volts relative to circuit ground on the plate of the tube, because the tube's not conductive. So you'll have 
plus 28 volts on your output. Well, what they did is put a resistor from plus 28 to the minus 28 volt line. So that charges this capacitor up and you end up having minus 28 volts on the output. And that seems kind of dumb to me. You know, that could damage some sensitive audio equipment that you plug it in. You know, solid state audio equipment can be damaged. It would make more sense to connect this resistor to circuit ground so that the output part of the circuit is referenced to ground. So your audio signal would be swinging around ground instead of negative 28 volts. Another potential issue is the impedance of this output circuit. You, know, you have a 4.7K plate resistor. So the impedance is quite high. And it's not awful. But if the amplifier you're plugging this into has lower impedance, it's going to load the uh, audio signal down quite a bit. To me, it would be much better to add a follower stage to this amplification stage. Okay, so I found a power supply. It's bazooka 12 volt 3500 milliamp supply I found in my box of wall warts and power bricks and stuff. Well, that's a bit overkill. It's on the very, I could turn it down a little bit because when you're running it at a lower current, this transformer base supply voltage will be a little bit high. So I didn't want to run it at too high a voltage. So I was just checking some voltages here. If I can get it in the shot. That's our uh, one of our rails there. Running at 31 volts and our negative rails at 29 volts so our uh, little booster circuits work in there our voltage doublers and I wanted to check this output well I can't get the meter in the shot but you'll take my word for it 9 volts it's jumping around I'm not making a good contact or something maybe I'll I'll just hit it from the top side. It was like 5 volts. And as I leave the meter on there, the voltage drops. Let's try that again. Yeah, 2 volts. See, it's dropping. It charges up. Must have a very weak leakage or something going on there. See this side, I'm not getting any voltage. This side... See, I put the meter on and it drops down. So I'm not sure what's going on there at this point. Let me take this off. We have tube filament action. I checked those voltages already. So we're getting about 6 volts per tube. This tube though is really bright. I don't know if you can see that. And the one on this side is a little bit dimmer. They're both warm though, so you know, they're getting the proper filament voltage. I guess the uh, next thing is to put some signal through there and see what happens. Okay, I have my audio player feeding in a one kilohertz sine wave. And I can adjust the level control on the preamp. Let's see what we're getting. I am not hitting clipping. That's probably because my preamp or my uh, audio source doesn't go very high. 3.39 uh, volts RMS. Yeah, that's plenty for line level. Okay, I'll put a 10K resistor as a load across the output. As you can see, as I put it on there, it diminishes the output somewhat. 
when I do my frequency response and distortion test, I'll be sure to have that load on there because that could represent a uh, typical preamp load. But yeah, it uh, does show that it has pretty high output impedance. Okay, we're looking at distortion now. This is the 1 kilohertz fundamental, the 4.5 kilohertz pilot signal that I put in as a reference at 1% amplitude of the fundamental. So his graticule is 1 kilohertz. So this is the second order harmonic. It's exactly at the same level as my 1% pilot signal. So we have 1% distortion there then about half percent of a third and then little notches of a fourth and a fifth so it's not as bad as i thought but yeah there is significant distortion i mean it's not going to appease the audio files okay it's the next day it was getting late so I had to wrap it up before i do the frequency response i want to find the clipping point it's daylight so unfortunately we get some glare on the scope only thing I can do is do this at night but oh well so I got the wonderful quality field tech function generator arbitrary waveform generator hooked up now because my music player doesn't have the output voltage to drive the amp into clipping so we have a nice sine wave there. So let's crank this guy up. Now look at that. There's our distortion. At high levels you can see that second order distortion where it gets rounded on top and pointy on the bottom. It's getting close to clipping. Uh, yeah, we're we're clipping so yeah we're clipping on the top there will it clip on the bottom i wonder and crank it up higher and higher and i guess not it just flattens out on the top but let's see what right around here we get we're starting to get distorted and that is 361 volts RMS. Now that's okay. That's way beyond what you would normally use a line level signal at. So in the normal range, you know, as we measured before, the distortion's not too bad. It gives you some of that second order tube goodness. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is set up here for a frequency response test. So we're at one kilohertz. Normally you do this at like one volt RMS. Okay, I decided to go like 1.1 volt. That way the peaks are on the graticules there so we can use that as a reference point. So what I'm going to do now is set the field tech to a lower frequency. Oh, I always grab the wrong dial. Always doing that. What is my problem? Oh, we just turned it off. That's 100, so I need to go down. Okay, we're rolling off big time. Okay, big fail there. Big fail. We're at half, no, that's a third amplitude. That's 30 hertz, that's 20. That's roughly about half. At 40 hertz, we're 6 dB down. That's kind of not so good, really. That's 100, we're almost there. Yeah, so this has a poor low-end frequency response. That must be fixed. To fix that, I would use larger capacitors. They're using one microfarad outputs. 
uh, the input should be okay because the uh, impedance is a lot higher. Why did they ever want to use one microfarad caps on the output? Doesn't make sense. Or I could be blowing smoke. <sighs> I'll have to check. And there I go. I did it again. I did it again. Crank this up to a thousand. Now the filling, it's just going to be flat all the way out. Oh, we're, uh, <laughs> I didn't realize it. We're at 53 kilohertz. Okay, that's 100 kilohertz. That's, yeah, I'm not going to go beyond that. It's flat. It just needs a little help on the low end. It needs better capacitator on the in or I'm sorry the output let me try that see if it helps okay we're set for 20 Hertz and you can see that our output is extremely poor so I'm going to take this 2.2 and bridge it across and I think that's the output cap right here oh yeah it almost brings it right up. Yeah, it's pretty much there. So you need like uh, at least a 3.3 microfarad or maybe a 4.7 for flat response out to 20 hertz or down to 20 hertz. So yeah, it's just the capacitor value they used. I don't know why. It's very poor base response with this amp. Okay, into day three of shooting this video from the horribly messy bench. So we'll give you some music samples here. Well, here's the tube amp going into Class D, so we'll mix up technologies a little bit. That'll ruffle the feathers of the audio fools. But first off, sitting idle, we are getting some electrical hum kind of weird here. Let me turn this up. You can hear it better. Uh, that was my stupid music player going to sleep. Okay. You can hear that hum. At mid-volume, you get that raspy, buzzy hum. And at other settings, you kind of get a power supply hum. So we're probably uh, coupling power supply noise over on the inputs or something. I don't know. I'd have to investigate. But, uh, yeah, not, not too good there. I mean, it's not really loud. I have to turn up the uh, amplifier all the way to hear it, but it's there. Another interesting thing I noticed, when I turned the switch on hear that that zing sound that's microphonics of the tubes those are after the volume control so that the vibration from the switch in the volume control shakes the tube contents so let me tap one of the tubes that's this one here you hear that ring little zing sound that's just microphonics. Not really a, an issue. It'd have to, uh, have to be really tapping something to make that happen. Okay, let's do a music sample. sudden have the urge to play Tetris. I wonder why. So the Russian dance. The Russian dance. Some of my YouTube download stuff. 
But anyhow, I don't know how it comes across the camera, but it does lack base. When I checked the uh, impedance of this, the input impedance of this amplifier, it's 5K. We were testing with a 10K resistor, so that really reduces the low frequency response even more. So yeah, it's uh, just a bad design using the those resistors, output resistors right there, uh, capacitors I mean, of such low value. Alright, so what are my final thoughts of this tube preamp kit? And it's just another mad Chinese product, but you know, it's only 10 bucks. It's always going to have the flaws. They never do the stuff right. They, they can never get these things perfect. They always have flaws in them. Every little Chinese amp board I ever bought. There's, you know, some are better than the others. But this one is kind of middle of the road. It, it works, but it has flaws. You know, I would have liked to see a two-stage amp where you have the gain stage followed by a cathode follower. You know, it has lower output impedance. And you don't have those issues I mentioned earlier. They should have used larger output coupling caps. Uh, you're getting a little bit of hum in there. Uh, distortion's not too bad. You know, if you want that second order harmonic, it's not a lot at normal output voltage levels. Yeah, around 1% of the, the second order harmonic. So yeah, it does present its tube sound. What else? Yeah, I guess that's about it. I mean, it's 10 bucks. Good practice soldering. You want to put a kit together, it's, it's good practice doing that. Okay, that'll do for this one. Thanks for watching. There's the Snickers. Earlier in the week, I thought I was going to lose him. He just wasn't eating. He's getting weaker. Just kind of a zombie. Didn't have much personality. Yeah, I was trying these expensive foods and he just wasn't eating anything. And I was getting upset. I was really concerned. But I put him back on his old canned food. No more dry food, but I'm putting him back in his canned food and he started eating that. And it's Saturday now, and he's uh, got his personality back, and he seems to be doing okay. I mean, he's still a 15-year-old cat, but at least it doesn't seem in dire straits anymore. Hey, Sick! You hungry? Yeah, you're hungry, aren't you? Getting close to feeding time.